very good evening. You're watching the business news in Bahrain International with me, Hiba Abdul Ghafoor. Bahrain Oil Share Index closed today at 1,283.46 points, marking a decrease of 0.31 points below the previous closing. The decrease was due to the fall in the investment, services and industrial sectors, and investors mainly traded in the investment sector, representing 83% of the total value of traded shares. 71 equity transactions took place with a volume of 1,892,253 worth 1,497,705 Bahraini dinars. The Central Bank of Bahrain announced today that this week's 70 million Bahraini dinar issue of government treasury bills has been oversubscribed by 111 percent. The bills, carrying a maturity of 91 days, provide a 2.61 percent weighted average rate of interest compared to 2.57 percent for the previous issue. The approximate average price for the issue was 99.344%, with the lowest accepted price being 99.310%. This is the issue number 1672. With this, the total outstanding value of government treasury bills is 1.985 billion Bahraini dinars. Bahrain Booth has announced the listing of United Gulf Holding Company post reorganization of the activities of United Gulf Bank as approved by the Central Bank of Bahrain, under which the first acquired 100% of the listed shares of the latter. An agreement was signed between Bahrain Booth and UGH to list the shares of the restructured entity on Bahrain Booth as of today. Another agreement was also signed between Bahrain Bourse and Bahrain Clear to assign Bahrain Clear as the share registrar for the shares of the company to provide a variety of services that include maintaining a record of the share register that holds the shares in electronic form and updating the data of the registry resulted from dealing on the company's shares. An oil official from the OPEC Gulf producers said that Kuwait expects to seal new deals to supply Chinese buyers with crude amid healthy demand for its exports in Asia. The country also plans to export a new light crude grade by January, as well as spending $120 billion over the next five years on expanding both its upstream and downstream businesses. Production of the new grade could reach up to 120,000 barrels per day, but the company is still studying the pricing mechanism for the grade. Its output capacity now stands at 3.2 million barrels per day and has been pumping around 2.7 million barrels per day, seeing oil prices in a range of $50 to $60 a barrel for next year. A 163.4 carat flawless white diamond, the largest ever to come to an auction, expected to bring an excess of 30 million US dollars, was previewed by Christie's in Hong Kong today. Christie's European chairman and worldwide head of its luxury division, François Curiel, said he had never come across anything like it. The diamond, which can be Detached from its white gold, diamond and emerald necklace goes on the block in Geneva on November 14th. Chinese Insurance Regulatory Commission said today that the Beijing Shanghai High Speed Railway project has been making profits since 2015. It was reported that China's insurance capital invested more than 10 billion yuan in the construction of the project, with the Ping'an Insurance investing 6.3 billion yuan, becoming the largest investor apart from the China Railway Engineering Corporation. Moreover, it will provide a policy support and open a green channel to major investment projects that serve national strategy and real economy. It said the insurance industry had invested 4 trillion yuan in major construction projects though infrastructure debt plans and stock right plans by the end of August. British Prime Minister Theresa May said there will be no cliff-edge Brexit today, adding that the implementation period of Britain's exit from the European Union will be time-limited at around two years, with some elements that could be brought forward. May addressing a conference to mark 20 years of operational independence for the Bank of England said her country needed to find close economic partnership with the EU after Brexit that finds a new balance between rights and responsibilities. 
She said it's not in the EU's interest to see European financial markets fragment. Bank of England Governor Mark Carney said that they would not expect to nullify the likely hit to the economy from Brexit, although it could influence how that hit is spread across Britain. The United States, Canada and Mexico said at the end of the five-day session of the North American Free Trade Agreement talks that there had been progress made in the talks but acknowledged that much work remained to conclude the negotiations by the end of the year. The three countries have rushed to find finished talks to modernize the 23-year-old NAFTA even through trade experts dismissed the deadline as impossible. The Trump administration has been criticized by Canadian and Mexican officials for not yet presenting some of the most contentious issues in NAFTA, including content rules of origin. Strains between Ottawa and Washington also emerged yesterday, a day after a U.S. trade panel said it would impose preliminary subsidies on a Canadian jet manufacturer. U.S. President Donald Trump proposed the biggest U.S. tax overhaul in three decades, offering to cut taxes for most Americans, but prompting criticism that the plan favors rich and companies and could add trillions of dollars to the deficit. The proposal was aimed at helping working people and creating jobs by planning to lower corporate income tax rates, cut taxes for small businesses, reduce the top income tax rate for individuals, and scrap some widely used tax breaks. The White House said that under the proposal, typical middle-class families would have less of their income subject to federal income tax. The plan foresees a 20% corporate income tax rate, down from the current 35%, but not as low as Trump's initial demand for 15%. And finally, before we conclude our business news for this evening, let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fared in daily trading. 